financial reform passed the Senate. It'll go to Obama's desk. He'll sign it. it passed 60 to 38. Should we celebrate? Well, of course, Obama administration says that this is the greatest financial reform ever done since the Great Depression. It's awesome. Mission accomplished. Everybody hang the banner. So, okay, you know how it goes. Okay, right? So, uh, now, of course, the press has repeated that in every single article, every single news story about how it's the most important and, and overwhelming financial reform we've had since the Great Depression. Okay, so how overwhelming was it? Well, did we really get uh, derivatives regulation uh, where they do the risky trading, etc.? Well, just to give you some sense of it, the CEO of Citigroup, uh, Vikram Pandit, said today, yeah, it won't really touch our derivatives trading at all. Okay. And they did a carve-out of 3%, which then turns out it's 3% of their assets, but it's actually 40% of their trading. Then you've got these giant loopholes uh, about how it's going to you know, take, so, first of all, several years to implement, but then even when they do that, they, they feel like, you know what, they'd like to hedge their uh, assets by doing derivatives. They still can. So you know all about the loopholes, and that's how it passed, right? Now, but there is an upside. The upside is, hey, you know what, uh, regulators can really get tough on them if there's, they think there's systemic risk, and they can even limit their derivatives trading. Gary Gensler can do that uh, at the Commodity Futures uh, Trading Commission. Fantastic. Uh, you've got a Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Good, great. So actually something positive can come out of this. But the next question, and everyone agrees, Paul Volcker, who uh, pushed for the Volcker rule initially, even Chris Dodd, who says, look, you know what, we'll see how the regulators have to do this. He says, look, it's not Congress's job to regulate. I would disagree with him. So we just kind of left it up to the regulators. Everyone agrees it's up to the regulators. So, but that's good. That's, there's hope, right? Because if you get the right regulators, maybe they actually take care of the problems, right? Well, that's why I want to lay out a marker for you guys. Should we celebrate this? Should we not? It depends. Right now, uh, who's going to hand, hey, be the head of that Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, right? Well, uh, Elizabeth Warren was the logical choice. She's the one who championed it. It was her idea in the first place, etc. Everybody assumed that she was going to be the head of it until, of course, uh, well, maybe not. Not so much. We, we were thinking about it. Huffington Post had an article saying that Tim Geithner is uh, against this. Really? I didn't see that coming at all. Now, Tim Geithner is against it because she actually wants to protect consumers from banks, and his, his job, according to him, is to protect the financial integrity of our institutions, meaning protect the big banks, right? Plus, she's been all over his ass. She kept asking him question after question about, hey, wait a minute, why did you give AIG 100% uh, of the, or why did you give Goldman Sachs and other banks 100% of the money that AIG owed them with taxpayer money. That doesn't make any sense. And he didn't like those tough questions, right? Now, other people have said, oh, no, Huffington Post, they don't know what they're talking about. That story can't be right. Obama's awesome. Of course he's going to appoint Elizabeth Warren. Well, so then the next set of stories come out. David Axelrod comes out and says, oh, no, 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 no. Elizabeth Warren is fantastic. There are also other people who are really good. <laughs> I thought, uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> right? He said, oh, yeah, you know, and... Here's where I thought, oh, elbow from the sky, we're in a lot of trouble. Okay. He said, oh, no matter what position she goes to, she'll uh, have a very important role in how we do financial reform. Uh-oh. There she goes, right under the bus. Okay. So now, look, I'm not saying it's a done deal. And she was such an overwhelming favorite, she might still survive this, right? But obviously some people inside the Obama White House have their knives out for her because she actually would protect you guys. So, I mean, look, I call that Obama's last test, and people say, oh, what do you mean last test? Look, because here's the thing. Here's why this is the last test, as to whether he will keep Gary Gensler and he'll actually t do tough regulatory reform, whether he'll actually appoint Elizabeth Warren and they'll do regulatory reform. The reason it's the last test is because I've been told by the pro-Obama people that the, the guys that wear the D on their helmets and Democrats, yeah, rah, 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 those guys, Team Democrat told me, no, Cenk, you don't understand. Obama is brilliant. His brilliance cannot, you know, it eludes your t small, tiny mind, right? And what he's going to do is he's going to pass something that looks kind of weak, but in fact, it allows the regulators to come in and do what's really re needed. Okay, I'm game. I'm game. Uh, and here it is. So is he going to do that? If he does, 
I swear to God, I'd come back out here and go, you know what? Tiny mind. Couldn't handle it. Obama's a strategist. He blew, moved the things around. And it turns out, yeah, we got, you know, we reined in the big banks. They're not too big to fail anymore. They're not doing risky derivatives trading with our money, whether it's taxpayer money or depositors' money. You know me. I swear to God, that's a, I would love that. You want to talk about, oh, I just played for half an hour straight, right? So that, but that's why we got a shot. But is he going to do it? I don't know. And my guess is the initial leanings are not good. Those stories about how Elizabeth Warren might be good in another role, or she's been great, but there are other people that are even better. Those are bad, bad signs. And even if Gary Gensler do, does want to do some sort of reform and actually do regulation, and, that, and I'm laying that guy's name out there, because if you see Gary Gensler go under the bus, forget about it. They were joking all along. They were never because Gary Gensler, his division is even more important because they're the ones that are stopping the fraud, the derivatives trading. If it's uh, too risky, etc., that's more macro picture. That's what's going to get things under control if you allow him to do his job. Okay, but if you see him go under the bus and you see Warren go under the bus, then there is no grand plan. They're not going to come back around and do the right thing. They're they, they're playing you. They're going to pretend to be progressives during the. Uh, the campaigns as they're doing now and as they did in 2008 and the minute it's time to make a deal they're gonna make a deal with the business interests and make sure they're protected now here's another bad sign Obama uh, officials including Valerie Jarrett and Rahm Emanuel of course two of the likely candidates reaching out to the business roundtable asking them what would you like to deregulate are you kidding me what would you like to deregulate and surprisingly they had uh, dozens of suggestions. So, so now, see, quietly, we're uh, beginning the negotiations over what to deregulate when we just started regulation in the first place. The signs are not good. There's still possibility, and no one in America would be happier if Obama proved me wrong on my skepticism and my cynicism. Okay, but I'm trying to look out for you. I'm trying to tell you what's really happening behind the scenes. Right now, it doesn't look that great.